Hi and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video we're going to be discussing probability distribution functions and how to use the binomial probability function to, to get your probability for certain situations. Now to do the binomial probability function we have the function the, prob the p of x is equivalent to ncx which is the combination of the number of trials and the number of successful trials times the probability of a successful trial raised to the power of the number of successful events times the probability of failure raised to the power of the number of trials take away the number of successful trials. Now the n again represents the number of trials in a certain scenario while the x represents the number of successful trials that occur in n number of trials. The p here represents the probability that a trial is successful while q represents the probability that the trial is unsuccessful. Right? And there's many ways that we could evaluate how the function actually works by doing it the long way and combining how many ways different events can occur. So for the most part what we're looking at here is a function of x and that function of x is based on these p's, the q's and the number of successful trials. Now a good example to explain this would be taking into account a scenario where we have an exam and there's a certain passing grade or a, a a good amount of a grade that will get you a passing mark or a good mark. So for this example I want to use a statistics exam for example, maybe like a statistics final. In the statistics final we know there are exactly 10 problems so our n becomes ten, the 10 problems themselves. Now each of these problems have, let's say each problem has a choice of five options for a solution, right? So maybe it has A, B, C, D, and E, and we know then that the probability of getting the answer right would be one to five, because there are five options and only one answer is correct. Now to change this to a, a probability percentage, which would be 20%, we would just divide the one by five and get 0 0.2. Now to get our Q, our probability of a failure, or a fail on a trial, we know that if one answer is right out of five, then that means that four are wrong out of five. And this, when we divide four divided by five, we get 0 0.8. And here, since we know that 70% would be passing with the minimum of a good mark, we would say the x will be at least seven. And this translates into x being so we'll put a little arrow here to define this. And we'll say x must be greater or equal to 7 because it says at least. This includes 7, 8, 9, and 10, right? So this would be x equals 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now, when we're using binomial probability, the specific events to complete this probability, because we're looking for the probability of getting at least a 70, which is 7 problems, correct? And the x would be 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we're summing up the probability of 7 plus the probability of 8 plus the probability of 9 plus the probability of 10. Now this is a case for the at least situation. And most situations for binomial probabilities are not like this because they deal with just a unique value. However, this deals with four unique values because 10 is the total number of problems and to get at least 70, we need to get at least 7 right, 8 right, 9 right, or 10 right. Now, let's complete one of these so we can get a good look at how the binomial probability distribution function works. So here we have everything we need to know. Let's deal with the probability of 7 first. And we say to get the probability of 7 correct answers, we would take the n, which is 10. Do the combination of 10 combination 7, right, because our x is 7. And we're going to multiply this by the probability of success is 0 0.2 raised to the power of x, which is, again, 7. And we're going to multiply this by the, po by the probability of failure, which is 0 0.8. And raise this to the power of 10 take away 7. So 10 take away 7 becomes 3. So this then becomes the p of 7 equals. Here we have the 10 combination 7, which is going to give us 10 factorial over 10 minus 7 factorial times 7 factorial and this is multiplying by 0 0.2 to the power of 7 
and this is multiplying by 0 0.8 to the power of 3. Now if you have a calculator, you can actually just run the 10 combination 7 on your calculator with no problem, and then have that multiplying with the 0 0.2 to the power of 7, and then have that multiply with the 0 0.8 to the power of 3, and that will give you the result. All right, thank you.